Welcome back to more Sip and Tell It. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And most of you know, if you follow me in any form, shape, or capacity on this channel or the other, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of Mike Penix Jr. And, and like RG3 used to say during the college football season, he come with that big Penix energy. And so just any time I get a chance to see him play and watch him spin the rock, I'm going to do it. And so we're going to bring you today his throws in his first preseason game. They lost the game 13 to 20 to the Dolphins. He was 9 for 16 for 104 yards, had a 76 uh, passer rating. So we're going to bring you his throws. Let's take a look at Mike's pending throws from uh, his first preseason game and see how well or how bad he did. And let's just chop it up. Mike's Penix Jr. on Moors at the Tally. Run the intro. All right, let's get into this uh, Mike Penix film. Obviously, the quarterback, so no need to highlight him. Let's see what we get. Get a little go ball. Kind of a little, little overthrow here. Got a three-step drop. No pressure from the, uh, from the Dolphins. Receiver wins off the line of scrimmage. Uh, I would say if the guy maybe keeps running and doesn't jump, he maybe runs up under it. But I do like the fact that it's kind of outside where it's either my guy or nobody. I do like that. A little bit of overthrow, but it's my guy or nobody. So I can live with that. My guy or nobody. I'm cool with that. Go to the second one we got. The fade ball to the same guy. Way drastic overthrow on this one. Yeah, these these balls can't land, can't land that far out of bounds. They have to land. They gotta land like right here somewhere. At the most. At the most part, they gotta kinda land right on the edge of the white. To give your guy like like just like we said in the previous throw. My guy, nobody. But they, they can't land over here by the by the cameraman. Watch where this ball lands. This is this this can't happen. And he'll get better at this in the preseason because we know Kirk going to probably start. That's just too much. That's too That's too far to bounds. Like, no, even the DB don't have a chance at that. Nobody has a chance at that. You don't give your receiver a chance throwing it there far to bounds. Get a little play action. So that, the play action is good. Got your hand, hand out. Got that ball out. Other hand tuck. So you got to be good at this type of stuff because you want to be able to, like with this type of stuff right here, you want to be able to manipulate this guy and this guy. The more you can manipulate these two guys and make them come up, the more space you have to throw the ball back here. Like, the more you can make them come up, the more space that gives you back in here. But if they don't respect your play action and they just kind of drop instantly or just kind of hover, the less the less you have to do your thing right here. So you want to be able to manipulate these guys, make them come up on the play action. That way that gives you more windows or bigger windows to do your thing behind them. So they really don't expect that's Tyndall and I'm Tyndall and fit. I don't know who 58 is, but they don't really bite on it. And it's first and 10. So they don't, they don't really bite on the play action. He comes out. He got two posts and a check down. So make us makes a smart decision. Makes a smart decision. This post is bracketed. That post is bracketed too by number 46. Smart decision. Smart, easy decision, in my opinion. Just takes it down. So this is one of his nine. Oh, that's an incompletion. The guy dropped it. The guy dropped it. I was going to say that's one of his nine completions, but the guy dropped it. Go to the next one. Uh, 
All right. So he's looking deep. Now, one thing about Mike is he don't have to, like, he can throw the ball from many different platforms, but he can also make during that any throw flat-footed. And I noticed that when he was at Washington and by looking at his college tape. He can make almost any throw flat-footed. So this route right here is the deep route saw. He got a deep post, not a deep post, a deep out at the top by 82 and a deep in by 19. You got the check down by the back. You got a check and release by number 12, helping with the end. We got the same thing by the tight end at the bottom. So he's looking deep, trying to see what he has. The deep end is in two. That's like, like there's too much going on right here for the deep end of 19. He maybe could hit this deep out, maybe. But look at the position his feet is in. You can't really, you can't make this long of a throw. You can't make that throw from this position with your feet. His feet is not in a position to make that throw. So let's see what he does. Now you can flip this ball maybe out here to the flat with your feet in that position, but you can't drive anything on this throw, even though the DB is kind of off balance from that position. So you can just you can check it down like that, but you can't make that long throw. He checks it down, which is a good decision. Good decision. And they get they go from second and ten to third and two. It's a good decision. And, that, and this is one of his nine completions. Go to the next. Quick out, little easy, real easy, real easy. This is the very next play. It's third and two, third and one. Two by two set, condensed. Little quick out by the tight end, and they are playing off. So this is this is like candy from a baby. Look how far off the DBs are. Like this guy is about what? One, two, three, four, five yards off. So he could have, he could have ran a quick out if he wanted to, but he didn't. This tight end right here, he just basically comes out out in the flat right now. He goes to kind of to, sh to uh, screen off of it, and it's just it's real simple, real simple concept. They don't jump it right now. You throw the quick out, get the first down, and that's what he does. Ball out now. I will say this. I watched some um, some stuff earlier. I was watching the last film I did on um, who was that film? I did? Whoever I did the last film on, I, I was watching YouTube and stuff, and I see J.T. O'Sullivan did the the film on the same person, and he was talking about the, the drops of the quarterback. And I sim I I agree. When you're in the shotgun, if it's some quick game stuff, there's no need to like to drop back. And you know, on the high school level, what I used to teach the kids is like. If you're in the quick game, there's no need to like if you're on the center and the three steps. So if you so let me let me let me back up a little bit. So if you're on the center and it's a three step drop, three step drop to shotgun is no steps. You just set your feet and throw. And so if you're on the center and it's like a hitch and that's three steps. So you go to a hitch from shotgun. That's just set your feet and throw. There's no steps on that. You just set your feet and throw or rock a step and throw. But I don't like the fact that people be up on the center and they'll still take a step or two and still throw because that all that does is let the, the DB see what you're doing and break on it. So I'm not a fan of this, you know, maybe one, two and get the ball out. If you're in a shotgun and it's quick game, catch it, set your feet and get the ball out. Don't drop. But that's that's me. And I see JT was a, a kind of a fan of that same thinking as well. You like that little extra step? No. My thing is catch it. Now fire from right. You see in fire. The ball should be already, the ball should be already to me right in this area right here already. Ball should be out already. But but you know he has to do whatever his whatever his coaches say do. He do it that way. But that was just my two cents from how I used to try to teach in the high school. And then I noticed that JT O'Sullivan said it on one of the films um, that he critiqued like uh, maybe yesterday or the day before. But it was the same person I had did on my last film. But let's just keep going. Let's keep going. But they got the first down. Let's keep going. That's just something I noticed when I was watching those. And again, remember I talked about him not necessarily having to be in the traditional quarterback stance to throw the ball? This right here. He's looking. He's staring at the free or maybe the mic. He just flat-footed and can get, and could get good velocity on the ball. Like, this isn't the greatest footwork, 
but he can get good velocity on the ball. Trying to try to keep the guy in the middle of the field with his eyes. Trying to. Gets, is this a tight end? No, it's a slot receiver. Gets the slot of the receiver a good ball. And it goes from second and 10 to third and maybe five, maybe. And again, throwing off platform. He makes a lot of throws off platform. Because he, he don't step into this. Just all, that's all on. That's all on. And if you go back and watch his Washington tape, you can go back and watch the film I did on him on this channel. He, he makes a lot of throws without stepping into it, with a lot of on. And then when he does get a chance to step into it, he rifles the you-know-what out the ball. But that throw right there is all on. No lower body. I think he needs to get into a habit of using that lower body to save that arm, though. If he wants to have a long career, he needs to get into the habit of using the lower body to save that arm, though, in my opinion. Hmm. See? Talk about decision making. Talked about decision making on the last film I um I had. Got two by two set with a tight end and a condensed receiver. Run the shallow with the dig behind it on the bottom side. You run the quick out, well not a quick out, but a, a out and a a go up top. You're trying to throw the out route. Trying to look at the leverage of the, the receiver. I mean of the DB. Outside leverage of the DB. Now, I will say the receiver wins outside, but he has to throw this ball in this area over here. He can't throw this ball like on his backside. He has to throw the ball in this area over here. It can't be on the backside. And that him throwing it like too close. So let's just say this receiver is number 12. I don't remember the number of, of this receiver. He has to throw this ball on the one side of this receiver and not the two side, if that makes sense. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So whatever the other number, whatever the other number is, I don't know. But he has to throw it to the top side of this receiver and not the two side. And he threw this to the two side, and that's how the DB was able to get their hands on on this ball. He had threw it on the back side, and the receiver was able to get their hands on it. You got to throw it to the top side, closer to the sticks. But it is number twelve. You got to throw it to the one side, not the two. Mm. Now with this right here, we we going first off we gonna say a prayer for this young man. And we gonna be real thankful that this DB slipped. We gonna be real thankful that that DB slipped. Somebody was some some higher being was looking out for this young man. Cause for him to catch and throw that, uh, we we gonna be real thankful that that young man slipped. Cause this might have been real ugly. Real ugly. It's this this cover two. Cover two look. We be real thankful that it just was a, a was a normal situation that he slipped. Cause it could have been either a knockout blow or a pick. Like right here, he has to see that. Like the DB is looking directly at him. He has to he has to see this whole I hit the wrong button. Sorry, hold on, 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 hold on. Hold on. Yeah, he got to he got to see all this. Like in his in his vision, he got to be able to see, like through through all this. He got to be able to see through all that. He can't just assume, like that that's gonna be there. Because the way this this guy's kind of pressing him, he knows he wants to throw this out. He has to see this guy is kind of giving that guy the, the leverage, and he has to know that. With that being said, and the way he's looking at the quarterback, that that zone. Because if it was man, he wouldn't be looking at him. He'd be getting ready to turn and run with that. So what he has to know, what he has to know now is that with him looking, he's going to try to let me get my stuff right. He's going to try to take that. I now have to throw this ball in this honey hole. 
and I got to get it up and down. I got to get it up and down to this outside receiver before this safety get over top, which is extremely hard to do, which is extremely hard to do. But we are fortunate enough, and number 19 is fortunate enough that he got this ball that well, at the corner slip. At the corner slip. Because they could have got it ugly. And it just was an incompletion. Well, no, it was actually a fumble. That's actually Chris, Chris, Chris Blair from uh, Alcorn State. Place where I got my master's degree. Go Braves. Shout out to Dwayne Taylor. DB coach at uh, Alcorn State. One of my good friends. I let play, all right, all right. We talked about a play fake a minute ago. All right, and the, and the linebackers didn't move. Watch the play fake this time. Watch the three linebackers on this play fake. They went this time. They moved. So that's that's a better play fake. Got that ball out there. Showed the ball. So they got to respect it. Put it away. That be, a lot better play fake. Well, at least a, a more effective play fake. Got the ball out there. Showed it. They had to respect it. And now look at all the room he got back here. Look at, look at the window now. Look how much room he got. A lot more room now. Hmm. The toes in or out? Where them toes at? Ah, oh, they out of bounds. Come on, receiver. You got to know where you at on the sideline. You got to know where you at. Come on, that's on the receiver, in my opinion. You got to know where you at. So great, great ball action. Balls out. Come on, receiver. Toe tap. Where your toe drag swag at? No toe drag swag for the receiver. You get an F and toe drag swag 82. Is that 82? No toe drag swag for you. F. F minus. F minus and toe drag swag. Two by two. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let go ball to Chris Blair. Go Braves. Blair wins off the line of scrimmage. Gets that ball up and down. Hey, beautiful throw. Beautiful throw. Let's see what the footwork looks like. The three step. Rock and fire. No pressure from the uh from the defense. Get up and down. Not too much air. Not too much arc. Catching in stride. Catching in stride. Just like it's Jalen Polk out there. Just like it's Romo Duze out there. Washington Husky days right there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful throw that last one. Ah. Ah. Ha. We'll make why why you get high on this one. Let's see. Let's see why we got high. Why are you high on this one? Good work is similar. I don't necessarily like the crossover. And yeah, this lip part right here is kind of wonky. That left, that right there, that's kind of kind of wonky. See that right there? We're looking at Penix now. That that little Crossover right there, that's kind of wonky. I'm not a Q QB guru, but I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, that's kind of wonky right there as far as the footwork. But still no pressure. The, the Falcons offensive line did a good job. I, I haven't seen him really pressured in, in any of these throws. It just gets away from it. It just gets away from him. No dolphins in his face. No dolphins in his throwing lane. No dolphins around the receiver. He just throws this high. This this is on you, nine. It's on you, See, 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 he made that terrible throw and then he comes back and make this throw flat footed. 
So he's looking at the bottom. And I don't know if he's holding, trying to hold the, the safety. Because he pump faced. Is he trying to throw this in or what? I think he may be trying to throw this in. And this, this, uh, oh, my bad, not that. I don't want that. And this linebacker right here has great eyes passing this off, looking at number 80. So I think he may be trying to throw this in, but the linebacker passes it off. And so he can't throw it without getting the linebacker murked. So he comes off of it. And then his dig is coming right, oh, his dig is coming open right in this window. And he throws it flat footed and throws a dime. Throws a dime flat footed to this dig. Just after throwing, just, just, just after missing a wide open out route. This is all on. Like he don't step into this. Throws a missile. And, and check out the nuance. Throws it back shoulder to keep the receiver from running forward and getting KO'd by 57. He kind of stops the receiver, stops his momentum so he don't just keep running. And gets KO'd by 57. Don't know if it's intentional or not. But I'm just saying. I'm just peeping it out. Just peeping it out. Let's keep going. We already at 20 minutes. Come on. Let's keep rolling. Free blitzer. In his face. Hmm. He tried to stand. He's tried to stand in the pocket. Tried to stare down the pipe. And get it out there. There's going to be times you got to do that. Sometimes you're going to hit. Sometimes you're going to miss. Sometimes you're going to hit. Sometimes you're going to miss. Trips left. Drop the screen off. That's easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Go to the next one. We got two more. We got two more people. We got two more. Trips left again. A little bunch set. I think he wanted to throw. I think he's looking at this out route to Blair. But they doubled it, so he came off of it real quick. Great decision. That the out is bracketed. Well, I ain't gonna say the out's bracketed, but in the process of him running to the tight end, it looks like this is bracketed, so he just dumps it off to the tight end. Yeah, because he he this guy right here is trying to get to the tight end, but he runs into Blair. So it's a pick route. In a sense, it's a pick route. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a pick route. And he throws the throws it to the guy being picked. And they get about I almost get a touchdown out of it. So that's what it was. It wasn't bracketed. It was a pick route. <laughs> it was a designed pick route. I realize it now. And this is the last one. Little easy. Get in the zone, find a soft spot, deliver the ball. Find the soft spot, deliver the ball. Simple. Ball out quick. Good catch of a ball. Ain't hey, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Now, I'll say this. Like, I know Kirk's going to start the season. And with me being a, a huge fan of Penix, like if he gets in or when he gets in, I'm going to be all happy for him. But I don't think they're going to hurt too bad if he has to play. And I know Kirk got the big contract and they're going to play him until like whenever he hits the cliff, if he hits the cliff, but whenever Penix time comes, the Falcons won't be hurt. Whether that's this year or next year, they won't be hurt. They got a guy, they got a dude. And when it's his time to step in that role and lead that huddle, they got a guy. And, and I'm going to be there for it to root him on because he was one of my favorite quarterbacks in college. And even though my fandom Lies with another franchise like like my team team. I'm gonna root for this dude, and you're gonna see a lot of this dude on this channel, man. So uh Falcons fans, if you're watching this, when Painting steps on the field, it'll be on this channel. So I just want to let y'all know that I appreciate you guys for coming out. If you like what you saw, hit that like button. If you have not subscribed, please consider doing so. Um, and I Mike Penix Jr. for y'all, man. Big Penix energy, and whenever he touched the grass, it'll be here this week. It's twofold. So if you're here for Mike's Penny, I get a double dose of I get to watch my Ravens and Mike Penix at the same time. Peace.